Alright people, welcome back to some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Tier Draft League Season 2. So we are still in round 1, this is match 7, and tomorrow you're getting match 8, and then we will finally be done with round 1. And then, we still got 15 rounds in the regular season, not including playoffs, so much content. So, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep up with the league and all the other content on this channel. And continue to support the league and everybody who is part of it anyway we're gonna have an awesome match for you guys here so we have the yuri starving predators with the captain oblivion duelist x in the national division playing his tier three star seraphs versus the reggie ddds with the captain pops 25 playing his tier one burning abyss so how this breaks down point wise is that if pops wins with burning abyss that's one point reward to the reggie ddds but if the Yuri Starting Predators of Oblivion Duelist X wins with Tier 3 Star Seraph, then that is three points awarded to the Yuri Starving Predators. So we're going to go ahead and see who will win it. Uh, I'm watching this blind as usual, so I'm going to be watching it just like you and pretty much commentating on how this goes down. So uh, opening hand wise, this opening hand is busted. Holy crap. Like, like if Oblivion Duelist goes first, wow, because you got the stick chair combo and some backer. You got the warning, the strike, and the, the nightmare. Holy crap. Over here on Pop Science, this hand's actually pretty good as well. Uh, you got the twin twisters for the back row. So you can go ahead and pitch the graph and summon from the dagger. It's not bad. The far front can go ahead and temporary spot banish, which might be pretty good against, you know, um, star subs here. You know, you make a XC monster and just like banish it and you lose all your XC material. Uh, the anti spell, not the greatest against this particular deck, so I might get sided out. And the quaking is uh, pretty good as well to put the monsters uh, summoned from the extra deck back into the hand. So it really just comes down to who goes first. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. So who is going first? All right, it looks like Pop is going first. So we're going to see the special summon, the Farfa, the normal summon of the grab, go to Dante, detach mill, and then Graf will go ahead and summon from the deck as well. So uh, overall, not terrible. Not terrible to uh, get set up. Uh, there's no real interrupting traps. Uh, so the graph summons uh, uh, the Sir, and the milling wasn't too hot. You milled your tour guide, which you keep in mind this is Burning Abyss, so the deck has three tour guides, the Solar Charge and the Traveler uh, and the Burning Abyss trap card. Uh, there's just no real interrupting tra uh, traps here. You know, As I said, the anti spell's not going to do too much, and by the time the Quaking is ready, he's already done his stick chair combo. So, yeah, that's going to be hurting, you know. Oh, wow, and another stick! <laughs> So, well, here we go. Stick chair combo. Draw, draw. Wow, and drew it to the chair again. Wow. Wow, so another stick, more chair, more stick, more chair. Holy crap. Yep, so pop, pop, draw, draw, pop, and wow. This duel has completely turned around. Like, holy crap. Like, super luck and a whole bunch of set back row. Oh, but a top decker Geki. Not bad, not bad. So, we're going to see... Uh, Oblivion Duel X get hit with that top deck or Geki, but uh, down but not out. Down but not out. Uh, gonna go ahead and hit the Dante with the strike, uh, which, I mean, it doesn't really do anything. You hit Dante with the strike, so it's like, oh, you prevent him from attacking, but he already milled what you want to do, and he was gonna get his graveyard effect. That probably wasn't the best of strikes, uh, I must say. Not right there. And then we're seeing all of them graveyard effects going off, burning Vix, so we already know. Oh, we're seeing the Super Quanto to try to clear up some of that back row, but nope, get hit with the Trap Tricks Nightmare. And there is just Sir getting hit with another strike. Uh, and there's still a Mirror Force and a warning left. And uh, besides, uh, uh, oh, well, no, no, because we have Skarn grabbing the Tour Guide back, and uh, uh, Graf will go ahead and resummon. So not not out yet. It's just the stick chair. You, you used all your sticks in your chairs. So now it's just like, what are you doing now? Ah, the pl the play is, uh, this, this is one of the reasons why Burning Abyss right here. This is one of the reasons why Burning Abyss is a tier one deck here in the league, because this stuff floating the potential, the out-resourcing. Like, Oblivion Dose X opened up the tits, probably the best openings you can open up with Star Sails, and still got the D and is getting out-resourced and slowly out outplayed, you know? Oh, we're seeing Maxi played on the tour guide, so I mean that should be wow. When you Maxi into the Maxi, this is before the ban list. All the decks for the league. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you now. All the decks for the league will be updated the ban list, so Maxi will have to go down to one. They're gonna be replacing uh, that second Maxi if they were playing in their side or main, which generally people are. But yeah, just Maxi drawing the Maxi, you won't be seeing that anymore. But ouch! So that doesn't really do anything. And instead of uh, allowing uh, taking a Maxi challenge or anything like that. You know, Pops is just like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to stop. So, uh, Dementor Barrier to go ahead and hit Xyz. So, 
that's the best neck one you can ask for. Uh, go ahead and see a little bit of trap tricks, and it looks like uh, you know what? Seeing a turnaround, a turnaround, the dungeon barrier with enough to stall, and uh, you know, definitely the resources are starting to turn around and uh, Blooming Duel SX's favor. Oh wow, Lexi, you're gonna go ahead and play it now. Or we'll go ahead and banish Wow, and then there goes that Utopia of the Lightning. Wow, catch a regular Mirror Force, but ugh. if that was a drowning Mirror Force, maybe, but a regular Mirror Force, yeah. Uh, Burning Bliss, I like that. That's nice. Wow, and I'm not sure if you forgot you're running the challenge or what, and maybe you didn't want to die. This duel, this duel is really close, really close. Take the 600, get the search, uh, that summon, but nope, Utopia of Lightning can't get over that booty, 25 to 25. Wow, and the restarts, like, this is a good duel. This is a really good duel. Like, some people, they were saying, like, Burning Abyss, they shouldn't be uh, tier one, but I can clearly see. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can go ahead and do that, but remember, Utopia Lightning has that Armadis effect, so you're not going to be able to do your effect to a take, so there was a misplay there. Uh, you still, you know, don't take any damage, and you still uh, aren't destroyed out because that's a continuous effect, but you can't activate your effect to take, yeah. So... This might, we might be seeing the end here. Yeah, that's, that's it. Scoop it up. This could be your Castell. Castell, put that back. Uh, the skill drain, I mean, that's nice and all, but you would skill drain your own uh, utopic feature. It mean that you'd just be nothing. It's your attack monster, and they just attack that. So, yep, that again. The first game, first game here, Duel 1, goes to Oblivion Duel X with Tier 3 stock stash. So, we're going to come back for games 2 and or 3 and see how this uh, the points will be distributed. All right, beer back. All right, game 2. So, if uh, Blooming Duelist X can take it here and uh, get the victory in 2-0, then that is three points rewarded to the, the Yuri Star Room Predators. But I don't think that Pops and Burning Bits are going to go down without a fight. So, let's go ahead and look at this opening hand. This opening hand is kind of eh, eh. Uh, Romello is a nice normal summon. You got your ice hand, pop some potential back row. Venera is a little slow, and you only got a chair, no stick, and... Uh, Nightmare. Well, over here we got tour guide, tour guide, tour guide. So people are wondering, is there three tour guide in Burning Abyss here? Only yes, tour guide, tour guide, tour guide. Skarm and a Chaos Trap Hole, which probably sided in, uh, probably took out them anti spells. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Who is going first? Oh, and it looks like uh, uh, Burning Abyss is going first. So there's one of the many tour guide plays. Go into Dante, Detach Mill, uh, Scrap will summon. Wow, and there's that uh, Beatrice. And uh, Burning Abyss does have three Beatrice. Pika Fire has one, Burning Abyss has three. Like Burning Abyss, people are saying Burning Abyss was in a tier three fight, but they got triple grab, triple sir, triple tour guide, triple B. Like, how can you not think that's worthy of being a tier one deck, people? Like, whoo, ooh, the power, the power in this deck. Uh, drew him into another Ice Hand. This is the greatest of draws right now. Yeah, and the play right there is kind of anticlimactic. You can go ahead and uh, send a cow cab to put back a card, put back the bottom list. So uh, just clearing up that back row to uh, potentially go in. Once again, the problem is uh, Beatrice doesn't count as a Burning Abyss, but when you have multiple tour guys summoning the Burning Abyss monster with their effects negated, they don't care. You know, their effects are negated. So you can continue using your uh, Beatrice shenanigans on top of more Dante. Uh, and that was a great mill as well. All right, the... The surge gonna go, but the surge just gonna come on the Dante back from the graveyard. And here is a nice chunk of damage right here. They're dropping his life points down to only two thousand. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and see the downer magician. So, uh, despite the fact there's multiple Beatrice in the deck, we're actually seeing a downer play uh, and burn of the cow cap. And only eleven hundred left, and that's it. Wow, wow! Like this opening hand, this hand was not good at all, not good at all, and. By the time you completely got something, it was too late. Uh, we're taking this to game three, people. I think this actually might be the first duel here in the league season two to actually go to game three. I think it's just been 2 0, 2 0, 2 0, I believe, at the top of my mind. But yeah, uh, going to game three. So this is the big one. Be right back. All right, people, we are back for game three. So this is for all of the marbles. Like I said, if Pop swims with Burning Abyss, that's one point for the Reggie DDs. But if Oblivion Duelist X wins with Tier 3 Star Seraphs, then that is three points for the Yuri Starring Predator. So it, it comes down to this, and I mean, the opening hands, though. So the Ice Hand, not bad, not bad. There might be some back row, there might not be. I'm not sure what else you could have sided out or in, but the Fire and Ice Hand is not, not the greatest to be played against Burning Abyss, but the double dimensional barrier could be devastating to just be able to take the neck one, flip it up, and prevent. Uh, 
pops over here from going into Dante and all the other XC monsters hurts and Nogaki, not the greatest either. Trap Trick, Chapel Nightmare, it's give or take. Over here, double tour guide. Uh, the Flying Sea, alright, so make sure that he can think, uh, see, think that Flying Sea would be more useful uh, against than with uh, Graph and Skarm. So, uh, really comes down to who goes first, which uh, I believe, yes, I thought so. I thought that uh, Living Dose actually going first to double the Mythical Barrier and the Trap Shoot Trap or Nightmare just might be able enough to whittle down the resources. Special Summon Skarm, Noble Summon Graph, and the Dimension Barrier is flipped, so. The best neck one in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now it used to be Book of Moon, but now, no. I mean, Book of Moon would be pretty good right now as well, but being able to just call it C's and prevent that Dante from being made, but keep in mind, he's still kind of pseudo-float. You know, the, the Graph will still summon from the deck, and the Scarm will get to search during the end phase. So, um, still not in a terrible predicament. The Ice Hand gets attacked and two flipped up. Uh, damage taken, but the Ice Hand, you know, and we're seeing the Flying Sea being thrown down right now, but, I mean... I'm not even sure if there was going to be an XC place. Wow, and we're actually seeing Graph summon Barbar, -Bar, who is stronger than pretty much everything on the field. Barbar's going to run over the Ice Hand. Ice Hand pops nothing, and no pop, no summon. So, because uh, there's no back row being played at the time, we're seeing Dante Mill for three, and we're seeing Trap Trick, Trap Nightmare being played on the Dante Mill. As I said, it's not the best of things. The Mills weren't the greatest either. Cow Cap can go ahead and bounce a set card, but meh. Uh, the maxi and then the trap of the trap card but the dante all you're doing is just stopping him from getting the attack he's gonna die and, and float and like you said the shenanigans will still ensue so uh and, i mean there's still a bottomless still a bottomless the dimensional barrier got bounced back to the hand so that kind of hurts uh and we're still seeing play downward is going to go ahead and uh be played now and the, the plays are, ooh, wow, wow. And we're not even going to mess around and see if there's any stick or chair or anything like that. Go ahead and take the cash drop hole on the stick. Ouch. And it, it, it looks kind of like this duel is going downhill already. All right, you're going to go ahead and catch out the bombs. I mean, it served its purpose because either going to pop a back row or bait out a back row. So the, the damage is done. Uh, the dimensional barrier is still there. Uh, that's going to go ahead and send that Dante, go into Beatrice, move that... Uh, Ooh, I like that. I like that you can go ahead and farf, move the, um, the Flying Sea out the way, and it's going to come back, you know? So you can kind of clear up the field, attack, get all the damage in, and the Flying Sea is going to come back, and, and then you still can't exceed. So uh, the lockdown is there. So uh, and, the damn, and like I said, this duel, it's starting to turn around. So you can go ahead and have your Flying Sea back. Yeah, you can turn it to attack mode and crash, but nope, nope, that is it, people. So despite the very strong opening duel from Oblivion Duels X Game 1, uh, it looks like Pop and Burning Abyss brought it back for game two and three. So uh, that was that was a great duel. I, I I enjoyed that. I hope you guys enjoyed that too. So that is one point to the Reggie DVDs and sadly zero points to the Yuri Starving Predators. So, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. I hope that you guys enjoyed. And I said we will be getting a match eight tomorrow. And that will be the end of round one. Finally, the end of round one. And round two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And then we'll count up all the points and see who will be making it to the playoff. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the support. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you guys are enjoying the Yu-Gi-Oh! Tier Draft League Season 2. This is big. We're going big. Uh, hopefully we can um, get some of the co-hosts and get uh, possibly some more live duels. But like I said, it's really difficult to keep track of 16 people. So uh, just <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, regardless. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I will see you guys tomorrow with some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Draft League Season 2. All right, people. Thanks for watching.